Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we're going to learn how to create a customized bulleted list, like the one on the right, in Adobe InDesign CS6, although this will also work in earlier versions of InDesign. First thing that you want to make sure is that your hidden characters are turned on, and uh, if it says show hidden characters here, go ahead and turn that on so that you can see wherever you have a paragraph return because that's how Adobe InDesign is going to know where to create a bullet. So you simply select your text and go up to your control bar here and you have a bulleted list and numbered list in your paragraph controls. We want to choose bulleted list. So that was very easy to do. But as I look at it, I'm not satisfied with the way it looks. So I'm going to select that and go to my character formatting and I see that my type here is 11 point, my letting is 14. So I'm going to go to my paragraph formatting and find the space after box and I'm going to enter seven points here, which is exactly half of my letting value. Just hit return and that looks a lot better. But I want to go even further and customize my bullet so that it's going to be a red heart. In order to do that, I uh, unselect my text. I just put my cursor in this first paragraph here. And now if I hold down my Option key or the Alt key on a PC and click on Bulleted List, I get my Bullets and Numbering dialog box. And this has all kinds of interesting possibilities in it. I can actually go from a bulleted list to a numbered list, or I can take bullets off completely. I can choose these different characters that are up here as bullets. Over here, uh, the default is a tab here, but I can actually go to an M space or an N space, a dash, and all kinds of different things that I could choose here, but I'm going to leave it on tab. Um, and I can control the indent here. Notice it's one pica six right now, but I could make it less if I wanted to or more. But what I want to do right now is I want to add a different character to this box that I can use. So I'm going to click here on add. And for font family, I'm going to choose Zopf Dingbats, which just about everybody has. Now you could use any picture font or any font at all that you want, but I'm going to choose Zopf Dingbats because I know that has a great looking heart in it. It also has this heart, which is kind of nice, but I'm going to choose this one and click OK. Now that heart pops up in my box here and I'm going to select that and I'm going to create a new character style in order to make it red. So I'm going to call this Red Dingbat. And just go to character color here. And I'm going to choose this nice bright magenta. And just click OK. And click OK. So that's exactly what I want. So now I'm going to create a paragraph style so I can easily apply that to the rest of my list. So I go to paragraph styles here, new paragraph style, and I'm going to call it red heart list. And that's perfect. So I'm just going to click OK. Now I can select the rest of my list. And there I am. Red Heart List. That's great. Um, very little else I want to do. I wanted to make this first part of the list bold. So I'm going to, um, actually, I think I'll make a generalized bold character style. So I'm going to make sure that nothing is selected. Go to Character Styles and choose New Character Style. And I'm just going to call it Bold. Uh, the reason that I'm doing it this way is since I had nothing selected, this font family field under G basic character formats will be empty. And I'm just going to choose bold. What this means is that this character style will work with any typeface that has a bold component, that has a bold font attached to it. So that's great. 
and I'm just going to pull this over here, go back to my type tool and select this and override my paragraph style with my character style. One thing to always understand is that character styles can override a paragraph style. But paragraph styles cannot override a character style. So I'm just going in and changing these. It's a little bit tedious, but it's going to make all the difference in the world to how this list looks. One other thing that bears mentioning is if I wanted to, I could further highlight this by using this very nice feature that came into InDesign, I believe in CS5. And I can actually split that selected area into two columns. Whoops, that's caused a little problem for me though. Look at this, I've got an orphan up there have to figure out a way to get rid of that. So if I have the freedom to edit the copy, I could just delete a word and that solves my problem. But we don't always have that freedom. So sometimes we have to get a little bit trickier. And the first thing that I'm going to try, and I don't know if this will work or not, is I'm going to select my bullet list. And I'm going to look up here in my kerning field. And I notice that InDesign is calculating the spaces between the letters by its default, which is metrics. But if I change that to optical, sometimes that will fix widows and orphans very easily. Wow, that's perfect. That fixed it just right. If that had not worked, I probably would have tried tracking something to pull this back onto a line, and that worked as well. But if you look at it very carefully, um, you can see that it did make the spacing, the letter spacing, look a little bit tight there. So I think that the first method was better. So let's just take a look at this now and look at it in um, Oops, the daisy. Look at it in preview. And I think that looks great. So thank you for watching. Uh, in the future, we'll have a lesson on numbered lists, which are very similar.